For the Daily Radio News on 94.3 WKUF, I'm David Jackson for Thursday, June 16th, 2016. The state Supreme Court has agreed to hear arguments from the president of the Flint Police Officers Union, Kevin Smith. Gary Ridley of the Flint Journal reports that Smith alleged that he was punished for speaking out publicly against the city of Flint's use of the, of the then-recent $5.3 million public safety millage. According to a 2013 lawsuit from Smith, after publicly complaining that the millage was not being used to hire new police officers, he was reassigned to night patrols on the city's north end. Up until that point, as president of the union, Smith worked from 8 to 4 with weekends off, allegedly in order to handle union business. Smith alleges that police leadership reassigned him almost exclusively to the North End, a beat that has been historically one of the most dangerous areas in the city, as retaliation against speaking out. According to Smith, no other patrol officers are assigned exclusively to the North End. An appeals court in 2015 ruled that being assigned to the city's North End did not constitute an adverse employment action, noting that patrol area assignments fall under normal job duties. Appeals Judge Karen M. Fort Hood, however, dissented with the ruling, stating that the case of discrimination should be determined by jury. Smith's attorney says that the Supreme Court's eventual decision could eventually redefine the state's laws on adverse employment actions, and the two sides have five weeks to submit briefs on the case. The FBI won a key victory in their fight to keep clandestine surveillance techniques hidden from the public disclosure. ArsTechnica.com reports that in a Washington state federal court case, U.S. District Judge Richard Jones sided with the FBI, saying that disclosure of the secretive cameras would harm any investigations that are using them and could be a threat to national security. According to the FBI procedure to install such devices, the methods usually do not require a court order or warrant, but legal review is necessary to ensure compliance with applicable laws. Peter Wynn, assistant U.S. attorney in Seattle, won an injunction against revealing the location of these apparently widespread cameras, telling the court that the U.S. government withholds the location of these disguised cameras because if revealed, the public may view them as an invasion of privacy. Senator Chris Murphy of Connecticut led a filibuster in the U.S. Senate yesterday. When Senator Murphy was recognized on the floor, he told the Senate that he wanted his colleagues to come together on tougher gun control measures, including a ban on people who are secretly put on an undisclosed terrorist watch list from purchasing firearms. Senator Ben Sasse of Nebraska addressed the so-called list, noting that he was unfamiliar with any such list, to which Murphy noted that an FBI initiative included such a list. The FBI claims on their website that their terrorist screening center is one of the government's consolidated approaches to developing a database of of suspected people who allegedly fit in an undisclosed profile. Being put on the watch list, according to the ACLU, is done arbitrarily, without due process, and apparently requires multiple lawsuits and appeals to be removed if a person even knows that they are on the list. Senator Murphy began his efforts after a nightclub shooting Sunday morning in Orlando in which a suspect entered a nightclub, allegedly passed an off-duty police officer with a 9mm handgun that generally carries 17 rounds and a 6-hour semi-automatic rifle that has a 30-round capacity and is accused of killing 49 people and injuring over 50. As a note, the police investigation into this crime is still ongoing. Senator Murphy's filibuster lasted 14 hours until the assembled senators agreed to look into the measure. In sports, the Detroit Tigers finished a three-game series in Chicago last night with a 5-3 loss. Bottom of the first, Chicago put up one run. Then in the third, Detroit shortstop Jose Iglesias hit a two-run shot, followed by a Nick Castellano single to left that drove in Ian Kinsler. But that was it. The White Sox chipped away at the Tigers with small ball the whole night, and the White Sox won the series two games to one. The loss puts Detroit's record at 33-32, which drops them to third place in the AL Central Division just two games back from the Indians and the Royals, who share first place. The Tigers start a four-game series in Kansas City tonight with Justin Verlander on the mound for an 8-15 Eastern start. Also later tonight, the NBA Finals continue with Game 6 in Cleveland at 9 Eastern. The Golden State Warriors currently lead the series against the Cleveland Cavaliers three games to two. For more information about today's stories, visit WKUF.FM. I'm David Jackson.